Have you ever been on horseback? Yes, I have. In the West Indies. Mm. Yeah. I've been on camelback too. In you Morocco. Enjoy it? Uh, being on a camel is horrific. It was the kind of thing that I get talked into on holiday from time to time. The horse. The horses was equally as horrific. When you're on tour in hotels, do you ever make it down to breakfast or do you just have it in your room? I'd have it in the room, but sometimes I go down for breakfast. It depends. It depends. Because it's usually buffets, aren't they? I can't do the buffet. Mm. Too many plates and walking around with people in flip-flops. Just get a guy, come in, bang, 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 Mr Gallagher, see you later. That's it. Sign the thing, gone. Are you up early on tour? I am an early riser, yeah. Well, even if you've been out the night before? Well, no, if, I mean, I only, need, only really need, like, five hours sleep. So, if I get in at, like, five, I can be up at ten. Really? Really? It's incredible. You're like Margaret Thatcher. I'm a fucking walking miracle. Have you ever paid for sex? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. When it comes to fighting, Mm -hmm. Do you have a special move? I've never been in that many fights, apart from fights on tour. Fights with general members of the public. I've not been in many. I could believe I've probably lost them all. I'm not good at fighting. If you were speaking about Manchester City Football Club and you proclaimed loudly, I love the blues, but B.B. King overheard you <laughs> and came over for a chat, would you explain the mistake or simply humour B.B. until he went away? So I'm I'm saying I'm in a bar. You're in a bar, right? And I'm shouting, "Up the fucking blues!" Yeah. Or was it? I love, I love the I love the blues. I love the blues. <laughs> and BV King comes over in his wheelchair. And says, "Me too." And I try and explain it to him my love of Manchester City. Do you like the blues? Yeah, I guess it does all sound the same, though, doesn't it? If you were a woman for a day, what would you do? I'd go out for lunch with all my girlfriends. People say the Germans have a word for everything, but they don't have a word for the feeling you get when you realise the thing you're pissing into isn't going to be big enough. You've gone for the milk bowl and realised halfway through. This, this must happen on tour, <laughs> in the early days, a lot, in a van. What, pissing in bottles? Yeah. Uh, I think I might have done it once. Once? What? <laughs> once, yeah. Really? I think so. Oh no, maybe I'm thinking of pissing in a cup in the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you slammed a door in anger? I'd say it was last year. I don't know. What I used to like doing is, well, with the slamming drawers, but you know with modern kitchens now, you slam the drawer and it goes... You used to be like, fucking day, wallop. Toilet seats. Now as you're well. just like. Psh, psh. It's kind of taken away one of the great. The point isn't being made. Yeah. It's taken away one of the great northern male pastimes, the <laughs> slamming of the drawer. <laughs> the slam a drawer on any old thing. What was it about when you did slam? Slam the door. Year? It's usually something to do with noise. If there's something noisy going on in the house, hmm. juices, right? Hmm. Make yeah. a fucking racket. Yeah. Those things. If there's one of them going on. What are you doing trying to write a song <coughs> upstairs? You're just watching the football. <laughs> well, whatever, you know, watching MasterChef or something, you know, someone's making a fucking juice. That'd drive me mental. Comedy slam the door. Yeah. And uh But yeah, what the slamming of the drawers, I miss that. Hmm. I miss good that. name for an album. Slamming of the drawers. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's something to do with <laughs> medieval underwear, though. <laughs> you meet Bob Dylan in a lift. You got time for one question? What is it? Not what floor are you going? To? <laughs> <laughs> question for Bob Dylan. Yes, Bob. Hey, man. Um, what? What are you up to? What's happening? You need to be going down for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain in your house what Freaky Friday is? Or would you rather say no comment? Who the fuck 
Has, has my message been on the phone to you? If you could travel through time, but you could only do it through those sanitary waste bins in ladies' toilets, <laughs> would you still do it? Absolutely. Is it true you've been trying to invent a new kind of shuffling spooky dance music genre called creep shaft? <laughs> <laughs> Creep shaft. <laughs> yeah. No comment. Have you ever danced unironically to the song Agado? <laughs> Hang on a minute. The wedding as a kid. That was a big song for a while. Oh, I mean, must have. Must have. Must have. That and Come on Eileen. You've oh, Come on Eileen. I'll fucking I'll be dancing to that on tour in a right. couple of weeks. Yeah. Is it true you were born with a foreskin like a windsock? <laughs> And you had to have surgery to reduce it. <laughs> no. Would you ever do leather trousers? Not even if my children's life depended upon it. Really? Do you ever think like, you know like rock stars like Jim Morrison? Mm. Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop, people like that. Do you ever wish you could be more like that? Or are you glad that you've sort of came in as a rock star who wears a coat? I'd like to experience the Iggy Pop, Jim Morrison thing, but I don't think I'd like to live it. Apparently, one of your favourite things is looking out of windows. Staring out of windows, sorry. Yeah. What is the ideal situation? There's one particular window that I do like staring out of, and it's on the, like, 40-something floor of this hotel in Tokyo, the Park Hyatt, and you can see across all of Tokyo. That is a good stare. Can you name a time in your life that you honestly thought you were going to die? A few times in the 90s, like, drug shit. Mm. But looking back on it, it was just you just being silly. But at the time, it was like, I think this is it. I think the old ticket's about to give way. If you ever released your own scent, not like that, <laughs> what would you call it and what would it <clears throat> smell like? Can you smell me now? <laughs> <laughs> It's the sort what does that smell like? Is it magnificent? It's people quite, say it's, it's quite magnificent. People say it's magnificent. They should bottle it. That's okay. But now we've got the name for it: magnificent. Right, magnificent <laughs> from Noel Gallagher. Magnificent. Black and white advert. Yeah. You on a beach, holding up a bottle. Yeah. Which is the shape of my head. Right. Just saying. Bloody lovely. Who were the last ten famous people to text you? I delete all my texts. Do you? Yeah. I'd say the, I'd say the last person to text me who was famous, Pep Guardiola. What did he say? Leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> I had... Uh, he was saying thanks for his... <laughs> for his what? <laughs> for his birth. And then there was nothing else. Is that a blowjob? Because I'm about... I'm realising how ridiculous this story is going to sound now. Brilliant. He was thanking me for his birthday present, <laughs> which was... He came to a gig of mine, and a friend of mine, photographer, Jill Fermanovsky, best photographer ever, um, took a picture of him in a, my dressing room, hugging mm. his daughter. Mm. And uh, she sent it to me, and I got it framed and sent it to him for his birthday, because mm. that's the kind of guy I am. That's nice. I thought, you know... And he texted me to say, thanks for that, mate. That's nice. That's, that's no problem. Oh, nice guy. I would never have known that if I hadn't asked that question. There you go. What's your f most frequently used emoji? <laughs> the uh, la <laughs> the laughing face one, that one. Yeah, yeah. with the yeah. tears. <clears throat> oh, there's got to be tears. Do you own a hoodie? Yes. Do you? I own a few, actually. I've never seen you wear one. They, they are... Uh, when you come off stage right. sweating and shit and you've got to get on the bus, they're essential. Do you like horror movies? No. Apparently you're obsessed with MasterChef. Is that true? Who told you that? I've been talking to your family members. I'm not obsessed with it, but it is on. A lot. No, that's not what she said. What did she say? <laughs> she said you're obsessed with it. You're obsessed with Greg Wallace and it's on Series Link. Tell the truth. <laughs> so I'm into this, this series of it. I've been watching it. <laughs> Can you do you cook? You don't cook, do you? No. If you can't cook, 
and you've got no understanding of cooking, why are you watching MasterChef? Because I like seeing ordinary people fail. Fucking just bizarre people who think, oh, I'll go on MasterChef. And they've clearly just fucking thrown a load of shit together. And John Troy going, well, you've got bread and you've got beans. Got yourself beans on toast there, mate. <laughs> and the other fella, the textures and the flavours are, whoa, it's just oh, magnificent. <laughs> If every time you had a chart hit, you would get an inch shorter. <laughs> <laughs> at what height would you stop making music? Well, I stopped at five foot eight. <laughs> was, five that, foot, was that what was happening? That was happening, yeah. I was strapping well, six if, you, five. if anybody goes and checks the old top of the pops, is I started at <laughs> I started at six one. <laughs> when I was officially the smallest man in the charts in history. Right. Then that would be it then. Because I'd have like shitloads of hits. Yeah. And I'd be in the Guinness Book of World Records. What about your love life? Well, that, there's got to be casualty somewhere along the line, mate. <laughs> and that might have to fall by the wayside. Have you got into the resurgence of vinyl? Yes. Would you ever consider busking in disguise? Uh, yeah. Can you describe your technique for making the, the perfect cup of tea? It has to be in a thick, tallish, white mug. You know you get mugs and they're like thin little bits of whatever they fucking make them out of? Yeah, fuck that off. So, good spoonful of sugar, not fucking half. Mm. A good spoonful of sugar, just one though. A Yorkshire tea, standard tea bag, or gold, Yorkshire tea gold. Yorkshire cold. Put the water in, leave the water in with the tea bag in the cup for two minutes. That's not a long time. I'm making the fucking tea here. I know, I'm just two minutes. Shocked. Right, and then stir it right. for about a minute. Mm. Squeeze it. Get it out. Get rid of it. Now, the milk, it should look the colour of, you know, um, Quality Street chocolates. Yeah. You know the one that's the the, the the flat thing? Toffee penny. The toffee penny. When you take the wrapper off. See, that's quite dark. Your tea, me. yeah. That's quite dark. Yeah. When you're on tour, do you let your family know when you've landed safe or do you just call them every few days? I let them know as I'm about to take off and I let them know when I <coughs> land the other end. Um, you told me once you'd like to form a super group. Yes. Who's in it? Well, there's two you could have. You could have one of all your favourite people and then one of all your mates, which should have a proper good laugh in. Now, what's the one that would generate the best music? <sighs> so, I'd say me and Johnny Marr, Weller. Then we just need a bass player and a drummer. Me, Johnny Marr and Weller do something good. Mm. Like a modern day Sly Stone. Yeah. I've got to say, my band's pretty good though at the minute. Yeah, I know. I swap them for nobody. You just did. <laughs> <laughs> if Putin invited you to do a private gig for him in Moscow, would you go? Yes. What if, once you were there, he demanded that you do a cover of Wannabe by the Spice Girls? Would you oblige? <sighs> it feels like there's a threat of violence if you don't. Depends on how much I was getting paid for the gig. A million pounds. No. A million pounds? Yeah. They've got more money than that. That mob. To do, yeah, but. They've got more money than a million you, pounds. Would you do the gig for a million pounds? No. A million pounds? You've got to fly in, do a gig? Yeah. No, I'd say I want five. It's five, or it's not happening, right. mate. Five million, yeah. you get there, then yeah. there's a sort of air of violence, and they say, right. I'd like you to do one of me by Spice Girls. <laughs> would you do it? If my life depended on it, I'd probably have to give it a go, yeah. Acoustic. Yeah, acoustic. Yeah. Sexy. Yeah. If when touring in Japan you found a strange bric-a-brac shop and bought a wooden boy for your children, but once you got it home it came to life and it was evil, would you burn it or would you try to teach it morality? <laughs> I think I'd burn it. Mm, what if it screamed while it was burning? All the better. <laughs>
<laughs> I think that concludes our chat. Thank you.